Lord Hannon will be Baroness Mackintosh. Lord Hannon of King's Clear. My Lords, looking around I see lots of former members of the European Parliament. I think there are half a dozen speaking in this debate, including my noble friend the Minister, until a moment ago also one another on the Woolsack. He was just perched on the steps of the throne as I started. And I think it is a, a tribute to the popularity of our new colleague, Lord Kamal, that there should be this support from different benches. We former MEPs uh, know what it is to deliberate unreported and unremarked. We have what the police might call previous in this department. Uh, but I hope in the circumstances your Lordships will indulge me if I add my voice to previous speakers in welcoming uh, Lord Kamal, a man of immense breadth of character, a handy cricketer, a, a brilliant footballer and a very talented bass guitarist, but also a man of extraordinary modesty. Over the past month, there's been a lot of press coverage of the change of leadership in the Scottish Labour Party. And people have been saying that the new Labour leader, uh, Anna Sawa, is the first Muslim leader of a British political party, the first ethnic minority leader. Now, I wish Mr Sawa every success. I don't think you have to be uh, yourself a Labour supporter to want the best for the Labour Party in Scotland. It's a party with terrific tradition, the party of Keir Hardy, the party of John Smith, the party indeed of that flinty patriot Lord Reid sitting opposite uh, now. And of, of course anyone who first becomes a dentist and then uh, a Labour MP in Scotland is plainly elevating the public wheel above his personal popularity. So, so I wish him the best, but it is not really the case that he is either the first non-white or the first Muslim British party leader, because uh, Lord Kamal had not only led a British political party, but had led a coalition of European political parties with extraordinary diplomacy and talent, remaining popular until the end, which is quite some achievement, as his predecessor in that role, my noble friend, the Minister, can confirm. On the renewables motion, I think this is a tribute to two aspects in our current energy policy that deserve a little bit more acknowledgement. First, the value of intelligent use of market mechanisms to deliver environmental goals. Now, Aristotle said that that which no one owns, no one cares for. And the use of sensitive uh, and uh, carefully uh, laid incentives so as to encourage the private sector to deliver goals uh, which deal with externalities has been one of the great uh, elements of the success of the UK in getting to a diversity of supply. Second, it illustrates that very often the things that make the biggest difference when it comes to environmental policy are rather technical issues of this kind rather than sweeping and sometimes histrionic global statements of intent. Uh, the measure, as my noble friend the Minister says, effectively restores the mutualisation proportions to what they were when uh, the bill was first brought forward, when the, uh, the change was first made uh, in the previous decade. But I share Lord Kamal's, uh, my noble friend Lord Kamal's ambition that we should get to the point where renewables become competitive and where technology delivers what state subsidies up until now have been required to help with as the booster rocket. So I support these temperate, these judicious, these targeted measures.